Hello, it's Daryl at 10 Foot Truck Good Attitude Services. Today I'm out doing, the weather's better now. Snow kind of went away. It's warming up around here. I mean, there's still snow and ice kind of here in the parking lot, but um, for the most part, the roads have been nice and clear. They're not as icy as they were. Um, I finally was able to get my truck uh, opened up. Uh, it was frozen. The back roll-up door was frozen. I finally got that open. So I'm considering, uh, you know, going out and uh, starting to do that because that truck is it doesn't it doesn't really work too well in the snow or the ice. But now I can ride. I can get out on the roads and drive with that. So I've got to start advertising for that truck. But in the meantime, I need some money, gas money, and that. And so I'm out doing uh, DoorDash and uh, Uber Eats and Grubhub, and then trying to get some roadies. But it's been really, really slow today. I mean, I, I think probably in January or February might be a slow time for these kind of apps. Or could be a lot of different things. Could be the economy. I don't know. But today was uh, pretty slow. I pretty much sitting in the parking lot most of the time. I did a couple door dashes early on, and now I'm just sitting here. I looked at some of the, the Ubers. They were just like. I can't take these three dollar orders and then if the orders are going too far i'm not going to take those I'm trying to get you know close by so i might have to wait till dinner you know dinner it's always there's always orders at dinner time that's that's a given if you want to you know if you're going to do these apps if you're going to do grubhub doordash uber eats or any of these food delivery apps um dinner time is the best time i just try sometimes try to go out early and see if i can capture some lunch orders but there wasn't much today and of course the dinner uh, order is going to be bigger which means they're going to be bigger tips you know just like anything if you if they order a you know $50 meal or $80 whatever meal it's, if it's big meal it's going to be a bigger tip and so you're going to get better money so sometimes it's just better to wait uh instead of sitting in a parking lot running the heater and um you know spending money on gas uh, I think I might just go home and wait but I was hoping to get a you know a good tire delivery from Rody. I didn't see any, so uh, that's unfortunate for me. But I'll try tomorrow again. I like those because those deliveries pay you know much more than than the food delivery. They pay you know you can get forty bucks, you can get at least twenty. And whereas food deliveries, you're looking at six dollars, seven dollars. I really try to avoid anything under six dollars, but occasionally I'll get a I'll do a five dollar delivery, but. I don't like doing those. Even if it was, like I did one today, it was really, really close. It was like the order was I was picking up was right like down the street. Not even I could have walked there, and then the delivery was literally down the street. So, and that was a four dollars twenty five cents order, and I would never take anything for that that low. But it was only it wasn't even a mile. It wasn't even a half a mile. It was like a quarter mile, and I was going that direction anyway. So I took that order, and. Uh, that worked out and then I did another one that was not that too far so I didn't put a lot of miles and then I was getting these orders they were they were trying to go way out they were they were far away from from where I was at in the mall so I didn't take them because even though they're ten dollar orders I don't want to drive out to an area that I don't go to and then have to um, drive back and then the miles on that and the time spent in traffic so I'm waiting for something here close I think I'm just gonna do dinner but I have been getting um, a lot of uh, um, requests for, for the uh, for orders for um, the junk removal app load up, and it looks like they're starting to get busy because they and they're, they're they're picking up. They're getting a lot of these uh, removal jobs, and they pay really good. Unfortunately, I don't have a helper um, at this moment, and uh, it requires to have a helper on those because they're heavy. And I could, actually on that app, you have to have a helper and I haven't been able to locate one. And I was thinking about, you know, back in the day when I, I had helpers and usually the good helpers that I had that would go out with me on the truck were family members or, or friends. Like my brother would go out with me uh, to help and, he, and I had a good friend, you know, I'd known for years. He helped me on jobs, did some moving jobs and delivery jobs for uh, consignment centers. And, and then I had a good friend of mine from the band um, helped me out with a lot of when I had a contract with a chair store and he, he always was able to help me out on those jobs and um, I could trust him so that's mainly the helpers I would have I, I never really had good ex experience with people that 
that I find to help me off of a, a Craigslist or something like that. So I pretty much just went, as soon as I moved, I was you know, in a different city. I don't have access to friends like that or family. I'm kind of on my own. I uh, just went exclusively one man in a truck for, for my pickup removals and junk removal. Um, since I don't have anyone I could trust at the moment. And um, so I kind of have to, I can't do those jobs. They're available, but uh, uh you know, I just, I don't have um, the help to do that. So I'm still looking. And I think, you know, from my experience before, the only time uh, this would work out for me if we were doing the truck would be working with people, friends, you know, people that I've known or, or like my brother. Um, I'm not like a lot of these companies. I'm just a guy with a truck. So I have, um, reservations about going on to Craigslist and uh, looking for help. Uh, I don't really want to do that because there's so many issues that could happen. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you have to have insurance or you have to hire them. You know, if you're going to hire somebody in these type of jobs or, you know, with going to someone's house, in their house and picking up something from their house, you really have to make sure they're trustworthy people, uh, someone that you can, that you can, uh, you know, trust that they're not going to you know do something funny steal something you know cause problems break something and be irresponsible and if you don't know the person and you don't trust them uh chances are something like that could happen and there goes your reputation maybe you might get sued uh so yeah that's kind of why i'm just you know doing it by myself because i i trust myself and if i'm going to a customer and they and they need and they they can help me with the load if it's heavy. I, I ask them if that's possible because I always, I'm upfront about the fact that it's just me. Uh, I have most of the tools like dollies and stuff that can, they can do a lot of the work with, with me just by myself. I can do a lot of things. I can move uh, pretty much anything on my own unless it's coming, you know, it's really heavy and it's upstairs and it's something that, you know, may be a difficult moving, you know, from a stair or down, from upstairs to downstairs, but in that case, I'm always up front with the customer to, you know, let them know that it's just me and if they can help or have someone there that can help, uh, then that makes it easier. So that's the way it is. So I, I'm not able to pick up all those, all that work that, that, that on that app because the fact I can't get help right now. Uh, so that's the way it goes on that. But when I do advertise on Craigslist, when I advertise on other uh, sources for myself, I'm very upfront. And I can, you know, discuss this with a customer and, and you know, and sell it for, for them, tell them they're going to make a deal because, I mean, they're going to get a good deal because even though it's just me, if uh, if they are able to, to maybe help me on that load to get, get something heavy in there, they're going to save money because, uh, you know, if it's two guys in a truck, it's, of course, going to be more expensive. So to me, it's, I just operate it as like almost like a truck rental with a driver and a helper. So I'm, they're getting the truck that they would normally have to rent at U-Haul. Then they're getting, but I'm, I'm driving it. I'm showing up to their house and I have all the proper tools, the blankets, the, you know, for covering things, the ropes, the tie downs. I got all kinds of hand tools and stuff that they're uh, a four wheel dolly, uh, a regular dolly. I have all that, that, uh, that you need for, for moving and, and you don't have to, you're not going to have to, um, rent it like you do for U-Haul or Penske or one of those. You have to rent those blankets you have to rent the the dolly so i kind of sell it that way i just sell it where uh basically you're getting a bonus you're renting the truck you're getting it pretty much the same price as, as a truck rental but you're getting a guy to help help drive and that's going to make it a lot easier then you don't have to worry about picking up the truck and dropping off the truck so that's kind of how I'm, I'm marketing now because until i can uh locate a trustworthy helper someone who's willing to help me out now, a friend of mine is going to be coming up in the summer, and uh, and when he comes up and visits, stays with me, I can uh, utilize him, and that's why I have these apps, because when I have someone that's available, and it's usually a friend or family member, because in that case, I don't have to hire them. They're just going to, they're coming out and helping me. They're coming out as a friend to help me, or as a family member, or someone, a friend of mine that I know that, then you don't have to go through all those processes of trying to hire somebody. Uh, so he will be visiting me in the summer and that's when it's busy so i'll probably be doing a lot of work with him hopefully in july or so 
In the meantime, I'm just going to, like I said, just one man in a truck. That's all I can do for now. And then doing these apps, these apps, they fill in the other time. The time that I'm not getting work on the truck, I can go out and do, uh, I have like eight other apps I can do um, for food delivery and for other types of deliveries. So, uh, and I have the car to do that. So that's about it, but it looks very slow today. Hopefully it picks up. Um, and when I do start doing the truck, hopefully this weekend, I might be able to maybe uh, do one of the junk rule jobs this weekend. Not sure yet, but uh, I'm glad that the weather is finally, I mean, it was brutal for the last like three weeks. It was like ice, snowstorms, frozen ice. It was getting so cold that the ground never really, really, uh, thawed out. I mean, it's still ice on the ground in some of the areas where you're sliding all over the place. Even you try to walk places, you're slipping everywhere. So I just kind of stayed home most of the time. Uh, I didn't really do a lot because uh, I don't like to risk my, I don't like to go out there unless it's, uh, I'll go out when it's snowing, but when it was really icy like that, I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna do it. I'll, I'll wait till later, I'll wait till things warm up. So now this whole week's gonna be fairly nice. So I'm looking forward to it. Hope to make a little bit of money because I gotta catch up. All right, well, I'll let you know if I get a junk job or you know, on my truck, because I'd like to get back in the truck soon. Hopefully, cross my fingers. I can get a truck job and, and, and without having to have a helper or maybe I can, someone I know can help me out. Um, you know, I thought about like, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I see, every time I think about trying to hire somebody, I don't know, I just don't think I can do it right now. I don't know. I know a lot of people have had decent experiences with people hire. I always wonder about that, like right now with the uh, this uh, job resignation they're talking about where everybody's quitting. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that really means because it seems to me like people are just doing their own thing now. They're like, they're finding their own way. They're doing maybe, they're, maybe they're doing uh, independent contractor work. Uh, maybe they're, they're doing uh, online, you know, type stuff. YouTube channel, whatever work. I don't know. They're uh, maybe a lot of people just starting their own businesses or something. I can't imagine like all these people they said they quit, like millions of people. I can't imagine them just like not doing something for money. Uh, so, I mean, who's taking, who's taking care of their bills? Who's doing all that? I mean, there's, it's not like the government's giving people any more money. Uh, so yeah, you got to wonder about that. And there is now, there's a lot of jobs where you can you can do at home where you can just get be on the internet. You don't have to go anywhere. So maybe there's a lot of these other jobs like that. So where your traditional jobs, like working at a restaurant or driving a truck or, or being out, you know, in construction, those are hard. They're harder to get people because of all these other opportunities. That's what I'm thinking. I don't, I don't think these people just quit and are not doing anything unless they invested in something and made a bunch of money. Uh, that's a possibility too. Uh, but see, that's the thing. I mean, like, Getting someone to go out and lug furniture uh, for an hourly rate, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to get people to do that kind of work. Uh, so yeah, that's why I just prefer to do it on my own because I, I, I'm willing to go out and do it. That doesn't bother me at all. And I've been doing it for a long time, I've been doing that kind of labor stuff, you, you know. It doesn't really, I know how to kind of handle it. You know, it's not about really being super strong. It's just about knowing how to uh, maneuver things. And, um, it really isn't that bad, but to get people to go out and do that, uh, and to rely on them, that's a whole nother story. So, uh, I may just be the one man in the truck guy for a while until, um, uh, you know, I've heard that the best way to, to approach that kind of thing is to, is to find someone that would be interested in a partnership so that they haven't, they're invested in your, just as much as you are. So they're willing to sell, willing to promote. And they all—they also know that they have this investment in, in something, that's, you know, something that's building, and they can—and it's, be, it's better than a job because a job you're like you're not really invested in that job. You're just going there, punching a clock. You're getting—you're just getting an hourly wage. You don't feel like you're really a part of it. You feel like you're just a cog in the wheel. And uh, so, but if you're a partnership, if you're someone who partners um, with a, a whether whatever kind of service, 
you're going to be much more motivated. And that's why I'm motivated as, well as when I go out and do it as a one man in a truck, because it is something I'm building. I'm building customer relations. I'm building referrals. I mean, I still get callbacks from, from the other cities where I lived in, you know, even though I'm not there, I can't do the job. You, you'll always have those referrals and people giving your number out and where you're going to, you're going to get constant um, work without even having to advertise. So, yeah. And I've had people, I, a friend of mine that I tried to partnership with and, you know, uh, but they just weren't interested in, in that kind of work. They, they would come out and help, but they really weren't interested in partnership or in building a partnership with that kind of job. So, uh, maybe somewhere down the line, I'll find someone that's, that's willing to do that where they, they want to go out and help on a regular basis and maybe help market and they'll benefit from it. But right now it's just me. So all I can rely on is just me, myself and I, and my truck. So that's it. So you gotta be flexible sometimes, and especially when I moved to a whole different area, I just had to figure out ways to market myself, you know, if I don't have other people. Um, and that's the way you just have to kind of pivot with the times and figure out, well, how can I use this? How can I, you know, present this service and get and make it uh, a, a valuable service to other people? And that's when I thought, well, since it's just me and the truck, I'm offering almost like a, a, a more of a valuable uh, service than a, a rental truck company because I'm there's going to be a driver there and a person that's going to bring the proper tools and help you with that. So that's kind of how I'm marketing it. I think it's it's gonna work. But in the meantime, I just have to do these gigs just to fill in the time. And um, and I'm grateful for the, the, these opportunities. That's why I got all these apps on my phone, uh, like Grubhub, Uber Eats, all those, because there's always, there's always uh, opportunities there. But like, that's an app that you're 1099, you know, you're a subcon or you're a independent contractor but you're using their platform. So of course, you're not really building customer relations with those because you're just dropping off the food. You know, no one's, there's, you're kind of just, you're not really building like a, a referral service with that. And that's kind of why I like the truck better because the truck I'm building customer relations, even business relations and referrals. And that's where you build of business in your community is doing that and whatever you choose to do you can build off of that people start to know who you are um so i'm really more interested in that than uh you know being using a, a platform and, and not able to refer people or not able to advertise me as a person in that service but uh i still you know, enjoy that too because it is independent and i don't have to you know really talk to a boss or you don't, you don't have to really interact with anyone but the app on the phone and you can go and do it anytime you want. So that does give you a lot of freedom and I've always been about freedom. I've never, I've worked a lot of jobs where I just, you know, worked, uh, you know, punching the clock and working for bosses and supervisors. And I really, really never enjoyed that. I always enjoy just working alone. I don't know, maybe it's just my personality. I, um, I don't like working under, you know, micromanagement type of thing. It's just not been me. And I've done it for a long time. I, you know, I started, I've done all kinds of jobs in those, you know, being micromanaged and having supervisors and all that and punching the clock. Been that for years. And it's, but ever since I stopped doing it, which was about around 2007, I just uh, quit my job and just started doing independent kind of work and self-employment. It's just, I've been happier. Uh, but there are times where, you know, you think about having a W-2 is that you, you know, you have that constant paycheck and when, when you don't, you got to self-motivate yourself. And there's a lot of times I just don't get motivated. I feel like not doing it. And uh, so you have to always be out there. I'm going to go do something every day. And that, that's been tough for me too. Um, the times that I would get contracts for my truck and when they were, you know, when they were relying on me to go do a certain amount of their deliveries, um, they were pushing me because they were calling me all the time and, and getting me motivated. Um, so that was good. So if I get something like that, because they, they'll be, you know, they'll be expecting that you're going to be available to deliver their items. And, and in that case, that, that, that is a motivation. They're not micromanaging you. They're not demanding that you do it, but you know, in the back of your mind that if you don't, you know, answer the call and do their, you know, help them out with their deliveries, they're probably going to go find someone else. So yeah, so I'm trying to self-motivate here. Um, 
get back in the game because where it's January, in the middle of January, February, you know, there's not as much snow here. And then March, things start kicking up. People start moving stuff and uh, things start rolling. So looking forward to that. I just uh, wanted to check in here and talk about things. And I think I'm on my way back home. Good Attitude Services, 10-foot truck. Have a good one.